Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Moving Markets podcast. It is the 2nd of April, 2024, Tuesday. U.S. market has been closed for some time now, um, several hours. I'm um, doing this uh, podcast, first podcast in a, almost a week or maybe a little over a week, uh, and I'm doing it just a little bit later. Tomorrow, it might be the same thing. The podcast might drop a little bit later in the evening. Um, and then Thursday and Friday, back to a normal schedule where I'll be, where I'll be doing this, uh, hopefully within um, just uh, maybe a half an hour to an hour after the U.S. markets close. Um, let's, uh, let's start today by talking about the trade that we sent out and, and going into the details of that a little bit. I don't believe, to, to my knowledge, no one shared with me that they got filled on this trade. Uh, I, I'm not aware that anybody got filled. Let me let me bring it up really quickly. We wanted to put on a, a long iron condor on Goldman Sachs, and at the close of the market yesterday, the numbers on it were really attractive looking. We we were looking at doing the um, 420, 425 bull call, and we were looking at doing the 405. Actually, I'm sorry, the 410, 405 bear put. Uh, sorry, I'm, let me let me make those lines a little bit smaller. Um, bear with me. I'm, I'm on a different computer than I am usually on. And so let me, I'll fix that. Okay, so anyways, long iron condor. We do long iron condors a lot here. We we do them very often. Uh, on, the, on the bull call side, we were looking at a $5 spread up here. On the bear put side, we were looking at a $5 spread down here. Uh, really an easy range for Goldman Sachs to move into after they report their earnings. At the end of the market yesterday, the mid price on this $5 spread, it was a lousy looking three. <laughs> the, the mid price on this $5 spread was around $3.30 a share. And I put a limit order of $3.50. Well, I'm, I, I mentioned I'm on a different computer than I usually am. This is not an easy one. The, the mouse is a little bit less responsive as I'm trying to put these things in here. So anyway, we, we put a limit order of 350 right at the open of the market. I mean, the instant the market opened, that mid price on that spread jumped up to like 410, 415. I saw it as high as this is just in the first hour of, of uh, the markets trading this morning. I saw it as high as 475. And then I saw it bouncing down close to 350 again. And I thought, I'm just going to leave my order in place in the hopes that by the uh, by the end of the day, maybe something changes and, and maybe this spread sort of normalizes and the volatility maybe ekes out of it a little bit and maybe we get filled. I, I did not get filled today. I am going to try the exact same trade tomorrow, but I am willing to go up to a $3.75 per share limit order. Now, if you'll bear with me a moment, I, I had this up on a different computer and then at the last second I had to switch computers to try and do this presentation. Let me tell you really, give me a second, I'm going to tell you where the mid price is on this right now. And if you remember, we went to the um, uh, the May 10th expirations, the 410, I'm on a different screen doing this, the 410, 405 bear put, and the 420, 425 bull call. And right now, at after today's market has closed, I've got a mid price on it of $4.20. That, to me, still seems really high. Uh, maybe what I'll do is go as high at, well, that, that's not what I wanted. Maybe what I'll do is go as high as three ninety. dollars I actually think it would still be a good trade up that high. It would be a better trade at three seventy five, dollars a better trade at three fifty. dollars But there's a large difference between the bid and the ask price on this trade. And, and that means there's a lot of volatility in these options. But I'm going to try the same trade again tomorrow. I'm going to change my limit order to 390. Now, if I get filled at 390, I'm only going to target a 15% return on this one. I'm not going to target the 25%. That we, if, if we had been filled at 350, I would have been ecstatic going after a 25% return. And I would have felt like there was a high probability of getting that trade. At 390, uh, if we went for a 15% return, we'd set a limit order of 448. 
I, I think that's appropriate. I think a 15% would be really good on that. So I want you to, I want you to put the trade back in. If you're following all the trades we're doing, put the trade back in, list it uh, with a 390 limit debit order. That's the most you want to pay to get into the trade. And, and then uh, hopefully we'll see things bounce around a little bit again tomorrow. And in the process of that, we'll have a chance to get filled. Uh, if the trade does not fill tomorrow, I did an almost identical trade this morning in, in my account on JP Morgan. Uh, Goldman reports two weeks from yesterday. JP Morgan reports a week from this coming Friday. So they're, but they're both you know close to two weeks out. I did the exact same trade on JP Morgan. Uh, I did a 200 205 bull call. I did a 195, 190. I'm, I'm sorry. I think I did a 197, 50, 192, 50 bear put. And again, I, I put on this one, I put a limit order, I think of 370. And I actually got filled on that trade this morning. And this wasn't a newsletter trade. This wasn't a, a safe. I don't send you guys every single trade that I do. Um, but I sent that trade out and I actually did get filled. JP Morgan wasn't down as far either from a dollar point or a percentage point, uh, but I actually got filled on that one, and that would be a viable trade to do as well. Let me give you those. Let me give you those numbers on J.P. Morgan again. On the um, on the put side of the trade, I, I'm sorry, I did the 195, 190. I did 195 long put, 190 short put. On the call side of the trade, I did the 200, 205. So when JP Morgan reports, we need it to go up above 205 or we need to go down below 190. And we're giving it a, a little less than a month from the time they report uh, to see that take place. So hopefully that will be the case. Uh, do either trade, do both trades. I, I already have the JP Morgan trade open in my account. Uh, I'm down a tiny bit in it, which means that it's probably a little bit, it would probably be a little bit easier to get into it right now than it was um, this morning. That's if things don't change dramatically at the open of the market. So um, those are two possibilities for trades. Now, uh, let's talk about a couple of our other spread trades. We've got a trade on AMD that earlier today looked really ugly. By the time the market closed, not nearly as much. The, the close today uh, was back up closer to 180 than it was to 175. It got down to 175 today. It dipped below 175 by eight or 10 cents a couple of times today, but actually finished up with a pretty small loss. I suspect that for another week to week and a half, AMD is going to continue to trade in this range. I'm not going to be naive enough to think it won't dip below 175 again. I'm hopeful it does not finish below 175. Let me make this recommendation to anyone who is in the AMD trade. If you have the AMD trade on right now, the way we set it up, and if you can get out of that trade with 10 to 12% profit or more, my recommendation is you take that and you get out. You exit the trade if you can get 10 to 12% profit or more, unless you have a little bit higher risk tolerance, in which case stay in the trade. I'm staying in my trade and I'm still looking for that 20% return. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a lot of confidence that AMD has maybe been a little bit unfairly beat up on and that I think in spite of these technical crossovers here, I think it's going to hold 175. I think that's a strong level of support. I think it's going to bounce back up. And I think ultimately this trade is going to be okay. I think ultimately we're going to be okay in this trade. I'm not ready to, to pull the ripcord uh, and, and bail out of this trade. Uh, I still think it's a good trade to be in. So uh, if that changes, I'll let you know. I'll let you know immediately if, if I decide that that's not the route I should be taking and, and that I need to do something else. But for right now, I'm staying put the way I am. I, I still think between now and sometime early next week, AMD will stay above 175 long enough for us to get profitable in this trade. But like I said, if you have uh, 10, 12 percent profit in it right now, if your risk tolerance is a little bit lower, take it and get out. Um, the last one, I, the last spread trade I want to talk to, because I'm not going to talk much about our diamond spread 
our Amazon spread or our Walmart spread. We're looking good on Amazon. We're down a little bit on Walmart, but I'm really not worried about it at all. It's a much longer term trade. Um, but the other one I want to talk about is Palantir. Uh, Palantir, this, this sell-off has been honestly very puzzling to me. I don't know what is causing Palantir to sell off like this. I do know that I am watching this line, and I'm going to start it clear over here on the left side of the screen. I'm watching this line. Very, what, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm off a little bit on that line. Maybe I do need to draw it from the other side of the screen. I'm watching this line right here, which is $22 a share. It went down there, it opened right down by $22 a share, it bounced up and finished up on the day um, dramatically from how far down it was. It was still down, but just a fraction compared to how much it was down earlier in the day. I think this is a strong company. I think it's a well-run company. We've got a longer term trade. Had it finished below $22 a share today, guarantee I would be sending out an adjustment right now. Because it bounced back up and really finished the day with a fairly negligible loss, I'm willing to stay in it and, and give it at least another day. Doesn't mean I won't be adjusting it really soon, but, but I think it is at the mark and has tested the mark that it's going to hold at right now, which is $22 a share. And we're long enough term on this trade that we can survive that. We, we, can, we can be okay with Palantir maybe getting in a little bit of a range like it was at right here, somewhere between 24 and 22, I could be okay with that for a few weeks, maybe even a month or so, or a couple months until it's next earnings. And, and then I, I have a feeling a month from now when it reports again, I think you're going to see another, maybe not a move like this, but I think you're going to see another strong move on their next earnings. Now, remember, after their earnings prior to this one, they, they jumped up, they continued up for a little while, and then they sagged off. Um, these guys jumped up on their earnings. They continued up wobbly, but continued up for a little while. They're sagging off a little bit. I, I, I think you might get a repeat of that. And I think you could see a long-term pattern like this where Palantir is taking these kind of big steps, little backwards, big step, little backwards, big step, little backwards. I think that could be a pattern. And over a, a six to 12 month period of time, that's a pretty nice pattern to have uh, if you can weather the storm. We're in a long enough term trade that again, if, if, if I'm wrong and it ends the day, any day this week, if it finishes the day below $22 a share, we will make an adjustment on it that will include rolling our short calls down, picking up some additional credit, and probably adding either a long put or a bear put spread to it. One of those two things is likely if we get any more down movement. All right. I'm not going to talk much today about our uh, collar trades. I, I I was just about ready to pull the trigger on um, just about ready to pull the trigger on an adjustment to American and Delta. We probably will adjust American soon because the the expiration of our long puts, I believe, is not too far away from their earnings date. Not far enough away from their earnings date. But it's not coming up in the next week or two. Uh, therefore, we don't have to be in a rush. Uh, we've got our long puts expiring in 426, and I think they report on 425. So we will be making an adjustment today. I was just about ready to make that adjustment, and then they sold off today. Uh, our long puts got back a little bit of value that they had given up previously. And so I was willing to stay tight, you know, just hold tight on that one until we figure out a little bit better what it's going to do. All right, so that is the portion of this that is for Safe Option Strategies members only. I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to mute my microphone for a moment. I'm going to pause. I'm going to get a drink because my throat is very dry. And, of course, you're not going to know that. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about what the markets did today and what to expect maybe the rest of the week.
Well, right out of the gate today, um, the markets were down and down dramatically, and they remained down throughout the entire day. There was there was a couple of times during the day uh, where things tried to bounce back a little bit. If you look at this one day intraday chart on the Dow Jones specifically, um, you can see that that it just right at the open, it just sort of collapsed. Um, 45 minutes into the trading, it tried to come back a little bit. Then it was down again, down again, down again. Tried to have kind of an end of the day rally. And it actually did come up and and kind of finish the day in a little bit better shape than, than you know, the, the plunge that it took in the early part of the day. But still, the Dow was down one full percent, 396 points down. And if we, if we were to take a look at a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, um, you know, you had this amazing, amazing first quarter, a couple of little dips, a little bit of a stall through uh, the first part of the month of March. But, you know, going from here's January one right here, little flat to start the year. And then it's just it's been mostly uphill. This pattern has not really changed dramatically other than the 20 day moving average flattening a little bit right here. The overall pattern, if you were to just trace the 20 day moving average, it really has not deviated much since the start of the year. That's a relatively steady kind of straight, you know, uh, not straight up, but but sort of a, a pretty straight pattern. And you got to be careful that you don't read too much into just a couple of days of trading. Uh, last week was a strong week on a holiday shortened week. Uh, a little bit of a sell-off yesterday, a little bit more of a sell-off today. That That's not a big deal. Uh, we had a few days of sell-off a month ago. We had a couple of days of sell-off only two weeks ago. We had three days in a row of sell-off just barely three weeks ago. This conference will now be recorded. So, it, you know, it is what it is. You just gotta, you gotta look at it in context. Now, with, with all of that said, I do want to point out something that, that I think is potentially, you don't want to read, like I mentioned, you don't want to read too much into just a couple of days, but at the same time, you've got to be aware that we could be reaching a point where this market might tip and it might correct a little bit. I heard several people this morning, as I, as I was watching, uh, I, almost every morning, I go back and forth between CNBC and uh, Fox Business News, depending on who their guests are or, or which program or which hosts are on there. Uh, I do a lot of flipping the channel back and forth. Uh, I, I have people I like on both channels. But I heard people over the last several trading days, I'm starting to hear more guests and analysts and, you know, quote unquote, experts that are starting to agree that that number one, the market may need to tip a little bit and, and that a correction right here would be a healthy thing. But the other thing I'm hearing that that is maybe should be a little more concerning than a possibility of a, just a, a regular technical correction is the fact that less and less people are in marching step with the Fed claiming that they're still going to cut rates three times this year. I'm hearing more and more people from some pretty diverse backgrounds. These are not all people of one political persuasion. These are these are people that, uh, you know, some of them manage very big portfolios. Some of them uh, are, are analysts for specific stocks. I, I, I'm hearing a variety of different people with slightly different backgrounds that are getting on the same page and saying, Inflation looks like it's rearing its head back up a little bit. Gas prices and oil prices are going up. I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a minute. And bond yields are going up. And these are all indicators that inflation is not just going to continue to be sticky, but it may come back around and start accelerating a little bit instead of slowing down. Remember, inflation, inflation for the last two and a half, almost three years has never stopped increasing. The rate of increase has slowed down, but inflation has continued to go up every single solitary month since Joe Biden took office. That's just reality. I don't care about your politics. That is a fact. Has it gone up as fast in the last 12 months as it, or last nine months as it peaked out in July? 
um, a year and a half ago? No, it, it, the, the rate of increase has slowed down. But don't ever confuse that with inflation. Not still, you know, prices are still going up. Things are still getting more expensive every single solitary month. And people are getting nervous about it. Let me swing back around a little bit to, to what I was just talking about with oil. Um, gas and oil prices are back on the rise. We, we had a little bit of a reprieve. Uh, the fact that oil, this is actually uh, after market prices and moves, oil is back up into the mid to high 90s, depending on whether you're looking at West Texas or, or world prices. It's back up into the high 80s, mid to high 80s. I think it's going to be back up over 90 very soon, and I think we're going to steadily through the summer march back up towards $100 a barrel for oil. Uh, there's a few companies that are going to do really well with that. Exxon Mobil was one of the small number of companies today that traded to the upside, Chevron Texaco. But other than those couple of companies, those handful of companies that might benefit from that, everything else could struggle simply because when the price of oil goes up, the cost of everything goes up, everything. Because even if you're getting a product or a service that may not be directly impacted by oil and gas prices, I promise you it is indirectly impacted. Uh, let me give you an example. A lot of people would, would look at uh, yeah, bananas were in the news last last week because for the first time in a really long time, Trader Joe's had to increase the price of their bananas. So that made this big, well, not big. It, it made a, a news story that was interesting for a day, but then it got talked about for another day or two. Uh, so if you want to take something as simple as bananas, when the price of oil goes up, the machinery that is used to spray the plants, the machinery that is used for the workers that have to go and pick, the machinery that is used to transport the, the bananas, um, the, the, the trucks that have to ship it across the country, uh, you know, even the stores themselves that have to turn on lights and, and run electricity for, for air conditioning and, and for their refrigerators and, and for their lights, oil affects all of that. So even if you think about, well, what does oil have to do with something like bananas? It has everything to do with it. Think of something that is not a physical product that you buy, but a service that you get. Okay, I have a physical cell phone, but I pay for the service through T-Mobile. That's where I pay for the service. I, I T-Mobile has to send trucks all over the country, all over the world to maintain their network, to maintain their relay stations, to maintain their cell towers. Uh, they have to have lights on in their buildings. They have to have electricity burning for all the different stuff that they do. Even companies that may not feel directly related to oil, I promise you, they are tied into it. Everything in our lives, the cost of it is going to be affected by oil. So you, you cannot ignore this. If we look at these oil prices, and I'm going to take a, a six month view on this. You know, we had we had a nice drawback and a nice reprieve back in November and December. And remember, this is when the stock market was doing this. November, and December it was going crazy. It flattened a little bit through the end of December and January. And since the early part of January, it has been on a relatively steady climb. Now it's a bumpy climb. There's ups and downs and it can go back and forth a little bit, but that's a that's a pretty big move up this year, uh, especially from a percentage standpoint. And I think that's going to continue. And I think we're going to be back above 90 within another week or two. And I think we're going to be at 100 before we get to the month of July. And, and that's you got to pay attention to things like this. This is going to affect our markets. So not only could we be in for something of a technical correction, and I do think it's overdue. I think it would be a very healthy thing for this market to just slide 7, 8, 10% at the most. I don't want to see it go more than 10%, but a 10% correction I think would be incredibly healthy for the market. If a natural technical correction though, has no well pun pun very intended if it has gas thrown on that fire in the way of high gas prices then you could see 
upwards of a 20% pullback, which takes it into a technically bearish market. That's not just a pullback. It's not a technical pullback. You would see enough of a drop in the indexes that we would be in a technically bearish market. Don't think for one second that can happen. Now, I don't want to be doom and gloom. I'm not hoping for that. I hope something happens and, and gas prices start to, to flatten again a little bit or come back a little bit to the downside. Uh, I hope oil prices, you know, come back down a little bit. Um, but I, I just have a feeling it's not going to happen. So be prepared. Now, I could also be wrong. We could have a natural correction. And if oil prices rise, but they do very, very slowly and they don't go up quite as fast as what I'm thinking they're going to, maybe that's not a lot of gas on this fire. And, and, and maybe a 10% correction would be about the max. And then it'd be a great time, absolutely wonderful time to buy back in heavy on some things that have taken a little bit of a hit. So you got to be careful for that. Uh, later this week, uh, I'll, I'll end on this note. We've got on... Um, Oh, let me get the right part of this up here. We've got on uh, tomorrow morning, we've got ADP employment report. And then on Friday, the, the full employment report. Um, either, either or both of those could really be a market mover if they paint a picture that is less attractive than what we're wanting. Uh, I personally think the, the private payrolls report is, is a more accurate one. Uh, the employment report can be skewed badly by adding a lot of government jobs and a lot of part-time jobs for people who are already working. And, and whatever administration is in office, they'll try and spin that to make it look like a positive thing. Um, I pay attention to the ADP report tomorrow. And when we do our podcast tomorrow afternoon, we'll talk about those results and what happened. I don't know that that tomorrow is going to be a continuation of this sell-off. I do think if the market rebounds a little bit in the next few days, we may get back up to an, an only slightly bearish week. But I think we're going to start the first quarter of April with a little bit of a bearish week, maybe the second or the, the, the second week of the second quarter as well. Then Two weeks from now, we really get into the heavy, heavy part of earnings season in those last two weeks of April, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens then as, as the earnings kick off with the bank stocks beginning at the end of next week. So we'll talk more about that in some upcoming podcasts. I'm going to wrap up right there. I hope everybody has a great day. We're back on a normal schedule. Uh, we'll do a podcast every day this week. We'll do uh, every day next week and, and kind of get back to a normal schedule after the little hiatus I had this last week. Thanks, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye.